most important ideas in physics is Newton's second law of motion. We're going to test Newton's law here by looking at a mass being pulled across a table by a person holding a force probe. Notice the object is hovering above the table. It's a hover puck and this will eliminate friction. So the only force in the direction of motion will be the force from the person's hand. We can measure this force using our force probe and get the reading off our lab quest. And when we do this, we pull out the little support underneath of the hover puck and it will start moving across the table. When we look at the position versus time graph, we see it's a squared graph indicating that the object was accelerating. We can see the uh, slope starts out gentle and becomes steeper and steeper. By looking at the velocity versus time graph, we can see that the object has a constant acceleration. We can find that acceleration by doing the slope of this line. So we get the change in the velocity, which is on the y-axis, divided by the change in time, and time is on the x-axis. By doing this, we get the acceleration of our object. And what we learn from Newton's law is that when we change either the mass or the force, we get a different acceleration. So if we raise the mass, in this case we double it, and again collect our data, we notice that our object moves more slowly. When we find our slope, we find out that the acceleration is half of what it was before. So a greater mass will create a lesser acceleration. When we look at force, in this case we double our force. Again, we collect our data. And we notice that in comparison with the last one that we just did, when we doubled our force, we get double our acceleration. So as a summary, Newton's law tells us that the acceleration of our object depends on two factors. They are the mass of the object, since that's an inverse relationship, we put that at the bottom, and the force on the object. Since that's a direct relationship, we put that up top. So a greater force gives a greater acceleration, and a greater mass gives a lesser acceleration. Remember that force net means total force, so if there was friction involved, which there was not in this experiment, but if there was, you just make sure that you subtract it from your force tension, since friction would be acting against your motion, and tension would be acting with your motion. 